will reward you. Jasper! Is someone there? Tell him it's the Countess to war. Jasper! Has the Countess arrived? Tell him! Send me in! Do not do this! He will have a terrible revenge! I'd be a fool to turn back now. <sighs> Monsieur, the Countess de War. Women are such fools. A woman willingly blinds herself to a man's faults, provided that he wears expensive clothing. And yet, if the same woman were to encounter a man of lower status, who was modest, humble, and intelligent, she would regard him as completely unworthy of her attentions. Jasper, are you awake? Come on, you dressed boy. Jack. Mademoiselle d'Artagnan, where's Jasper? Did you let yourself in? Why are you here? I was... Never so... mind, I'm delighted to see you. Jasper! Thank you, my lord, but, well, I see you. Oh, uh, <laughs> excuse my state of dress, and, and stay. Come, sit down. Mademoiselle d'Artagnan, I've so enjoyed your company over the last three weeks. I shall miss you when you go to La Rochelle. You are in fine spirits, my lord. <laughs> yes, I am. So, uh, why have you called so early? I assume you have something to say to me before you leave? Yes. Yes, I do. Count, there's something I must ask you before I leave. Could you, although I am only a soldier, one day find me deserving of your love. Oh, why, your presence here has been proof of that. Yes, of course. But what of the Countess de Wolfe? Uh, why do you speak of her? She is a gentleman. You had a visit from the Countess last night, did you not? How would you know that? I know more than you could possibly imagine. This is no business of yours. But it is. I have to tell the truth and make things right. The D'Artagnan of today and the Deward of last night are one and the same person. Why, you dishonorable wretch! Before to leave. You villain. You will die for this. I will destroy you, D'Artagnan! You will kill me too, Mademoiselle! What shall I do? You must never return to this place. I will help you escape. Here he would kill us all. Order your musket. Port your musket. Prime your musket. He calls himself the Count de Winter. I do not know if that is his real name. He cannot be alive. I am sure it was the same man. He had the Fleur de Lis on his right shoulder. He has returned to haunt me. I must see him. Why? What will you do? Let me go. He feels he once wished to kill this man. He is someone who would be willing to return the favor. Do you think for a moment that I am anxious to live? Of course. Let him vent his hatred on me alone. No, D'Artagnan. There is more to this than you know. <clears throat> Happily, we march today for La Rochelle. For your sake, D'Artagnan, I will not leave you. And upon my life, he will do you. At least when we're at war, we shall have only women to fear. Cast about your musket. Place the charge. Set the wadding. Remove your scouring stick. You make a lovely impression, my angel. I've brought you a cake. One of our clients is a poultry dealer. Oh, Porthos. No, no, my dear monsieur. You must be brave. Though your courage should waver, just picture me riding high on my Spanish charger, majestically plumed. Order your musket. Port your musket. Blow upon the coals. Again? Oh, my friend. Forgive me. You're you, Dr. 
D'Artagnan. How did you get here? He has been secreted out of the Cardinal's jail near Chartres. There is still much danger. Where will you take him? He will be kept safe in a Carmelite monastery at Bethune, near the border of Flanders. The war is over. Come for him. You promised to be worthy. Oh, of course. There is no more time, monsieur. We must go. <coughs> Protect yourself, D'Artagnan. Farewell, my son. Open your pack. Prepare to give fire. Take aim. Give fire! Enjoy your first taste of victory, Your Majesty. Both your musketeers and my guards fighting together to fortify France. History will record you as a brilliant military strategist. Just so. And what my field marshal shall be, my next course of action. I think it prudent for you to return to Paris. And you? I will remain here, lodged at the Dovecot, and see to it that La Rochelle is blockaded and surrounded. The Duchess of Buckingham must be taught a lesson. Don't you agree, for meddling in French affairs? Huh. No, absolutely. Well, the Duchess musters reinforcements. I will starve the Huguenots into submission. Starve them? My own people? I beg you to remember that they are rebels, Your Majesty. What else would you have me do?
D'Artagnan, you are becoming a soldier of insight as well as courage. Mortal would be proud. Thank you, Captain. <coughs> Should we not escort Madame Porthos on a stroll on the duff cot? We would not want the Cardinal to discover her over breakfast. <laughs> Definitely not. Fortitude when the cardinal was in need. And have I not always shown appreciation for that diligence, Count de Winter? Count de Winter! I want you to set sail for England. I wish to settle this affair with the Duchess of Buckingham immediately. You will leave for London tonight. When you arrive, you will seek out the Duchess. May I remind your eminence that since the affair of the King's Diamonds, Buckingham detests me. How am I to regain her trust? You will present yourself to her as a messenger from the king. Tell her the king depends on her, but she must withdraw all support for the rebels at once. If she will not? Then I put my hopes in one of those violent events which change the course of nations. <laughs> so what exactly does your eminence allude? I merely suggest that some clever, ambitious young man may wish to advance himself while eliminating an enemy. And the Duchess is an enemy of France. Do you understand? I do. But, now that we have discussed our country's enemies, might the man be permitted to say a few words concerning his? The man has enemies? One. Your eminence knows her. Her name is D'Artagnan. Life for life, woman for woman. You give me the one, I will give you the other. I do not understand what you mean, nor do I wish to do so. However, she's an insignificant creature, and I have no objection to giving you the ordering request. What are they doing? If you succeed with Buckingham, you may have D'Artagnan to do it as you please. Here's a carte blanche to aid you in your endeavors. Leave immediately. Farewell. I must see you. Athos, what do you intend to do? Be prudent. Leave. Maybe. Do you recognize me, monsieur? I can see that you do. Countess de la Fere. Yes, the Countess de la Fere in person returned from the other world expressly with a desire to see you again. I thought I had crushed you, but neither I deceived myself, but the devil has given you new life. What do you want? Assassinate the Duchess or cause her to be assassinated. It is of no consequence to me. But if you harm D'Artagnan, that crime will be your life. That girl has cruelly insulted me, and she will die. Can a creature such as you be insulted? Hand me the paper that the Cardinal gave you, or upon my life I will put a bullet in your chest. Well, you know I will do it. Take it. Be damned. Buckingham. He bargained with her. 
the life of the Duchess for the right to murder you. That letter is a carte blanche by which you may kill you, perhaps all of us, with impunity. Why did you let him go? He was protected by her eminence. By taking that paper, I have stolen at least some of his venom. We must destroy this. On the contrary, it must be scrupulously preserved. I cannot sanction the murder of Buckingham. We must protect anyone the king holds dear. We are musketeers, are we not? Anyways, compose a letter warning the Duchess. Tell her she must put this man under arrest before he can commit any further injury. How will this letter make it to the England? Someone will have to carry it and personally deliver it to the Duchess. <laughs> if you would permit me, mademoiselle, I would carry the letter under the lining of my coat and swallow it if I were taken. <laughs> I must be the one to undertake this charge. D'Artagnan, you cannot leave the front. You would risk insubordination. Send Planchet. She is a capable woman. Take this. And good luck. Be discreet. Be brave. I will. You must rely on me. For if I fail and I'm taken, I'll be quartered. And even if I am quartered, no one pins me on the beak! You may tell your cardinal that I will not desert the Huguenots at La Rochelle. If Richelieu wished to negotiate, she must meet with me at the Louvre. My lady, I know you mistrust me, but perhaps if we could speak alone, as old friends, I could persuade you with a plea from someone closer to your heart. What are you trying to say? That the king of France trusts his honor to you? Men trust where they have need, my lady. Dismiss your servants. Let us talk in private. The king. Felton, take him! How dare you! Monsieur, I have been warned that you come here as an assassin. I may do anything I like with you, and what pleases me is to ship you to one of our colonies in America. You will depart in five days. I leave you in the charge of this good woman, Jane Felton. Believe me, Miss Felton is a devout purity in the Lord. Your charms will have no effect on her. Planchet, you have risked your life to save mine, and I am indebted to you. I have only performed my service. My lady, you must return to La Rochelle at once. Tell the young D'Artagnan that all is well. Count de Winter, since you are a man, I will treat you with the utmost respect. I owe it to myself, but not to you. This way. I am grateful to you, Miss Felton. Before we go, do you think you would be so kind as to find me a Bible? I will give you mine. Thank you, good madam. We of the Puritan community must never be lax in our vigil against sin. We must guard against temptation, for the nature of sin is as the nature of canker gangrene. It runs from toe to foot, from foot to leg, from leg to thigh, till it has wasted and destroyed the life of the body. Even so, if we give sin an entrance, it will soon spread over the whole man. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Do not condemn me to the depths of the earth, for thou, O oh Lord, art the God of those who repent. I do not wish to disturb one in prayer, Lord de Winter, but you set sail tomorrow. You have hardly taken any nourishment. I insist that you strengthen yourself for the journey. I do not wish to live. God himself condemns suicide. My God is forsaken. It is blasphemy to blame your faith. I have overheard your prayers and know you are a Huguenot. The Duchess has loyally supported our sisters at La Rochelle. <laughs> Do you really think Buckingham truly supports anyone of faith? She merely wants a way to Paris so that she can satisfy her lust for the French king. I will not hear your slander. It is not slander. I was one of her first victims. But that was long ago. I would not give up my faith. I do not seek justice for myself, but 
for my sisters. It is they who suffer persecution now, all because of Buckingham. I know you are my brother in faith, but what can I do? What can any of us do? As you are bound by duty, so I am bound by shame. It is no shame to be a victim. I was faithful and innocent, and your duchess ruined me. Afterwards, she boasted that I was to continue as her whore. I tried to kill her. In revenge, she called an executioner and had her brand a mark of shame upon my flesh. Look, Jane Felton, this is what she did to me. I cannot bear this. But what can we do? The Duchess must suffer for what she has done. I will secure a safe passage for your return to France. There I will take you to the pier, but I must leave you for a time. I will avenge your shame. Do not fear. God is with us. How can I feel fear, my beloved Felton, with you as my protector? A letter from the Count de Winter. Assure Her Eminence that the Duchess of Buckingham will no longer trouble France. Can you confirm this? My spies assure me that the Duchess of Buckingham is dead. Well, well. I have left England and am at Calais awaiting further instructions. Send word to the Count immediately that you will meet him at the Carmelite Monastery at the Food, from which you will escort him across the border into Flanders. My lord, at a monastery? Oh, yes. Express my gratitude to the Count. And do make it clear that I do not wish to hear from him again. My dearest Count, I pray this letter finds you safe among the Carmelites. The English have withdrawn their forces, and there are signs of a complete surrender. Once the surrender is verified, my friends and I will travel with a few and find you. I promise to see you soon. My love, first hand. Pardon me, your majesties, but I have news from England? Yes, yes, what is it? There has been a violent attack against the Duchess of Buckingham. Oh? Yes, some religious fanatic has chosen to take personal revenge. And has the Duchess survived this terrible assault? She has not, your majesty. I'm sorry to report that the English Duchess is dead. Oh dear, oh my. Yes, it is shocking news, and how fares our king? Your Majesty, I hope you are not unwell. I am perfectly well, Your Grace. As always, I thank you for your devotion. We are, of course, quite secluded here, Count de Winter, but we are not ignorant of the intrigues of court. Bethune has always offered sanctuary to those in need. I am grateful for your protection, Holy Father. I seek a safe place to await the arrival of my sister, the Honorable Countess de Rochefort. Be of good cheer, Count. You will find friends here. In fact, there is a poor creature with us who seeks refuge from the Cardinal. It's hard to imagine him a criminal, though, as he has the aspect of an angel. I suspect his only crime is loyalty to the King. He was a tailor to his majesty. What is his name, Holy Father? Conrad Bonsieur. Conrad, Conrad, are you in there? No, come in, Mr. Boy. Conrad, this is the Count de Winter. Perhaps his company will help to ease your confinement. Pardon me, but my duties call me away from your most charming company. Holy Father. Monsieur, Monsieur. Oh, I'm overjoyed to meet you, Count Winter. Please sit down, Mr. Count. I'm starved for news. Can you tell me anything of the siege, La Rochelle? The war is over. The English have surrendered. I have heard that the Duchess of Buckingham is dead. The sad news indeed. I believe that she was once a friend of France and our dear king. Yes, and I have often feared that friendship would endanger his majesty. 
I, of course, wish only for the king's well-being. I'm well, glad that we share that sympathy. If I am not mistaken, we share more than our sympathies. I, too, fear revenge from the cardinal. Don't be afraid, Count. I have friends who are also in service of his majesty. Once the war is over, they will come for me and find me and take me far beyond the reach of the cardinal. Perhaps we can help you. The cardinal's guards have broken into the monastery. You must go hide at once. You violated our sanctuary. We must hide together. Come with me. The Count is rushing. Make your own monastery. Oh, I hold in my hands the life of D'Artagnan. More than her life. Come back, run! Leave you again! D'Artagnan? D'Artagnan, help! Come back! What have you done? My compliments to the cart. Oh, my compliments to Satan! Winter, we are here to charge you according to your crimes. I, the Countess de la Fere, was once wife to this man. I then discovered that his sole intent was to seduce and deceive women of nobility and rob them of their wealth. His iniquities were of such a magnitude that he was branded with the mark of the Fleur de Lis. I hereby accuse this man of having caused the assassination of the Duchess of Buckingham. I also accuse him of corrupting one James Felton, who was induced to murder Buckingham on his behalf and has paid for her error with her life. D'Artagnan, before God and before men, I accuse this man of having murdered Conrad Bonacieux. Monsieur, can you refute any of these crimes? <sighs> Ladies, what is the punishment you demand against him? Death. 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 We will not be your executioners, monsieur, but this woman may, by law, kill you without being named a murderer. Before she takes you away, have you any last words? If you know any prayers, repeat it, for you are condemned and are about to die. <laughs> D'Artagnan. If you take one more step, D'Artagnan, you cross swords with me. Let the justice of God have its course. <gasps> The question is whether it is better to be loved rather than feared, or feared rather than loved. It might, perhaps, be answered that one should wish to be both, but since love and fear can hardly exist together, it is far better to be feared. Mademoiselle D'Artagnan, what a pleasure to finally make your acquaintance. Your eminence. You have shown yourself to be quite a capable woman. I admire your courage. However, I have had complaints. And I have here a bundle of particulars, but you must be answered. What are the charges against me? You are accused of having corresponded with enemies of the state and pried into our secrets. And who is my accuser? A man branded by the justice of France? Of whom are you speaking? The Count de Winter. Her eminence was undoubtedly ignorant of his crimes when she honored him with her confidence. Mademoiselle. If the Count de Winter is guilty of any crime, I assure you, he will be punished. He has. He's been tried and condemned, 
and this trial has been carried out. He's dead. Wow. His actions have altered the destinies of nations and destroyed the lives of men. And he murdered the woman, the man I love. Well, have you any means to defend yourself? Only this. Your eminence will undoubtedly recognize the hand. It is by my order for the good of the state that the bearer of this has done what she has done. Here, I have taken one part, Rosh. I must give you another. It's a commission for a lieutenant's meeting with the inspectors. You may be stopped and observe it. Can you fill it in yourself? Thank you, Your Eminence. I know three women who are more than worthy of such a commission. Do with it what you want, as it is blank. Only remember that it is I who gave it to you. Your eminence may rest assured that I will never forget. Good. Rochford? This is D'Artagnan, whom I welcome into the number of my friends. I believe you have something of hers which needs to be returned. Thank you. We shall meet again, shall we not? Whenever it please you. The time will come. 